Hello, welcome back to part four of Design Socks with me. I'm Gabs of Slip Slip Sis Designs. In part four of this video series, we are wrapping up designing the socks. I cover how I wrote the foot um, pattern for the socks as well as the toe and then finishing up the socks. I actually have my finished sock. Very exciting. It's done. It looks great. It came out exactly as I imagined. So I'm thrilled to show, share with you the entire process. Part four is the last um, true pattern writing portion of this series. Um, thank you so much for joining us for part four as I wrap up writing my sock pattern. So in this first section, you can see I wrote leg when I totally mean foot. Um, so this is for the foot section. I wrote out um, all my knit rows and then you can see me here. I'm writing to a note to myself that in the previous section I had round zero and double zero. So that was my transition into from the gusset decreases into the foot um, so that I made sure that I was keeping the same pattern as before. So this will eventually end up going away. It's just my note to myself so I don't lose track of where I was in the pattern. So I do leave notes for myself as I go. I have to switch to the contrast color. So I'm, it is the same pattern that continues throughout the leg and foot, but sometimes it, um, the numbering of the rows changes based on what was happening previous, like in the gusset decreases when I had to make that transition. It changed my row numbering, but the pattern, it visually looks the same. It just written isn't always the same. So now you can see that I'm correcting my um, previous note now that I've gotten it written out the way I want and I am going to condense my rounds one through five to just say knit but it helped me keep it straight in my mind on what I was doing. I also turned out and realized that I was missing a row as I was going so this is me going back to edit the error that I made. For the transition to the foot, I tried to include as many reminders for the size three section as I could. <laughs> you notice I still have not noticed that it says leg instead of foot, but I will get there. So this is the note to my to the size three knitters that it that the row begins in a different location. And I'm going to also include the note in the foot directions as well. So the note will appear twice in the hopes that it is noticeable to the knitter. I have finally noticed that it says leg instead of foot. So I just corrected that as I was scrolling back and forth. So this is the chunk where I give the instruction on how you should measure your foot. I did not use the word calcaneus, which my sister always wants me to use. That's your ankle bone to measure from the calcaneus. Uh, Chaley is a dance major, so she is well-versed in anatomy and kinesiology. So I think her patterns may say calcaneus, but I measured... I just included the note to measure for two inches shorter than the desired length. Um, now I have switched to go into writing the toe portion of the sock, which is um, kind of the basic toe pattern that most um, of us may have at least seen in a different pattern. If you knit one of mine and Chaley's patterns before you've seen this, this is one where it's four decreases. 
um, every other row, I did include um, the amount of stitches decreased. And then for round two, it just says to knit and then to continue repeating them until there are 24 stitches that remain. And then I also included how many times you would do that if that helps the reader or knitter understand what I'm asking them to do in relation to Kitchener the toe and weave in your ends and block it. I always find it ironic when I type weave in your ends because if you watch our podcast, you know that weaving in ends is not my thing. Hello, I'm back. So it's been a few days since I last checked in with y'all with the design. Um, I've just been, I was knitting on the foot and then I finished the toe, wrote the pattern for the toe. I need to make a couple adjustments, but we have a finished sock. It's looking super cute. I love how it turned out. I wove in the ends. So the next thing that I do once I finish the sock is I go back through the pattern, pardon me, I go back through the pattern and uh, kind of clean it up, make sure all the language is the same. Um, I, th I don't think I'm going to record a screencast of me editing it because it's pretty slow and tedious and it might, it's a little bit dizzying because I like have to scroll back and forth. So the next step that I do is I go back to clean and tidy up the pattern, make sure any of the adjust adjustments that I made work, make sure it just looks a lot cleaner. And then I cast on to knit the second sock. And as I'm knitting the second sock, I'm following the pattern. Even if I've got a decent portion of it memorized, then I kind of keep going through it, making sure it's correct. Sometimes, and I may do this, is um, sometimes I hold off on doing the second sock until I have, I've got testers and then I knit the second sock at the same time as the testers. So if they have questions, my sock is in progress so I can kind of see what they're talking about and what they might be struggling with. So my next steps are clean the pattern and then I usually put out, I need to photograph it, which I'm fortunate my husband usually does my photography for me. Um, so he'll, f so we'll photograph it. I post a testing call. I really do try and make my pattern look what I think it's going to look like as a finished product when I send it to testers. I try not to send a pattern that's in progress or that's missing pieces or I try not to include the notes like we'll add this later. I try and make it look as close to what I imagine it will look like as possible. Now I know it's not always possible to do that but I try my best to do that so that it is clean. And I can see if there are errors because if I go back, if I'm trying to add something back in later, then I could totally mess up like everything. I even do the formal formatting that I wanna do for the pattern. So I, for socks, I like to do um, two columns on the page. So I'll do the two columns when I send it to testers. And the reason I do this is that sometimes a page break is in a really weird place and it causes a the pattern reader or whoever's testing it to um, miss a step in the pattern which that happening happened in steekling is that the pattern break was in a strange place and one of my testers was using her ipad so she scrolled and she missed a key portion of the pattern so i really try and do my formatting as true as possible. I know there are different schools of thought on this, that some people do it more as a narrative and then will format later. I've seen testers do it like that. But for me, I think it makes more sense to do it as true to final form as possible. So I'm gonna edit it, edit the pattern, and then my next steps are prepping for testers. And hopefully you're seeing this video before I've called for testers. So if you wanna test the pattern, you'll check it out in the comment box, in the description box below to apply to test this pattern. I forgot to talk about this when I talked about editing the pattern. This is, I think it's called romance copy, but really it's a little, Chaley and I call it a blurb. It's a blurb about our sock 
kind of like a little intro or maybe like what, like the flap on the back of a book where it gives you a little intro on what we were thinking of. So part of my process in creating a pattern, and this is usually one of the last steps that I do before I go put out a, a call for testers, is I send, the picture, I send a picture of the finished sock to my sister, and I say, look at my sock. And then I say, I need a name. And then she and I start, um, this is usually over Google Hangouts, uh, she and I start brainstorming names together. Um, usually I kind of tell her about like what I was, what I was going for with the pattern. And then she helps me think of punny names because we really like puns or something that goes with the theme. So we just kind of start throwing names out there and then see what we stuck with. So for this one, Chaley suggested, and I really liked as the name as just my stripe, just like just my style or just my size because it's a customizable pattern. So these are the Just My Stripe socks. So thinking of names is always tricky. Everyone has a different creative process for it. I do recommend um, searching the Ravelry database to make sure it, the name isn't already being used by another designer, as well as doing a quick hashtag search on Instagram to just see if it's out there because it's um, people have similar ideas all the time, but it helps um, create it create a distinct um search when on instagram if your pattern is has a distinct name it just makes it easier for you to see other people's work for people to find your work um as well as it avoids any confusion with other designers so i would just do a quick search once you have your name just to see is there any is there someone out there with that name already and then maybe tweak it i know there's a lot of like vanilla sock patterns or lots of variations on vanilla or like um something like that so just something to consider so that's kind of my last step in the pattern writing process sometimes i go in with a name sometimes i don't um a lot of times i wait till it's finished so i can show chaley and chaley usually thinks of the name i'd say about 70 percent of the time she's named our patterns, um, even if it's me who designed them. So it's kind of our process, but you of course can name your pattern whatever the heck you want to name it. I finished editing the pattern. I included a little tip. I'll include it right after this on how I make editing easier for myself. I use the control or command F function to search the page for any of the errors or if I'm replacing something so that I make sure I've done that. I feel like it's super basic, but I'm a high school teacher, so I see the obvious sometimes because sometimes not everyone's aware. So thanks so much for joining me on the last segment of pattern writing. And the next step is test knitting.